Hello and welcome to this continuing live coding series on creating a website from scratch with Python, Django, and the Wagtail CMS. We're working on porting a website from a nonprofit organization called Western Friend. The current version of the website is built with Drupal, and we're realizing that we're going to need to dig into some features where we'll need a little bit more control of the code and layout and things like that and the decision was made that we'd probably be better to invest time in uh, working with Python um, than the sort of PHP and Drupal ecosystem. So that said, we're working on a community directory aspect of the website. And we've come quite far. Um, so we have a couple of introductory blocks and a list of yearly meetings, as well as various um, group, groupings of other Quaker resources. In the relatively short term, uh, we're going to be porting these Quaker organizations over to the sort of community resources um, model uh, and just adding a new category of community resources. The organizations are essentially community resources. They don't often publish articles in the magazine. And we might be able to refine the division of uh, the way we have the community directory divided up. Right now we have everybody, people and organizations and these meetings all in one sort of table. Uh, we decided to do that because of the um, nature of the magazine articles. They can be authored by people and organizations in Quaker gatherings. So we want to make sure that uh, it's easy to select people from all those uh, in, a, in a common way and list the articles that they've contributed to. Uh, it turns out I was able to successfully port the um, contact model over to wagtail page model and that gives us a lot more flexibility than the um, basic Django models so I think we actually can separate these out into subclasses they're already by de definition subclasses of the the page model but even having distinct um, models for person versus a meeting versus a uh, quick or organization or else moving those into the um, out of the contacts and into the community resources model. Oh, actually it's over here. Somewhere below here. There it is, community resource. Um, so that's kind of looking down the road a little bit. So people who are interested in following along, we'll be working on those types of changes in the coming sessions. Today we're gonna to work on something that's uh, altogether different, but one of the powerful aspects of Wagtail, it's called the stream field. And essentially what Streamfield allows you to do is give editors, content managers, a free-formed interface to define um, page content type media and how it, how it lays out on the page. Um, streams consist of blocks of content. And they can be as granular as a heading or a paragraph or an image, or they can be kind of composited together and they can be characters or text blocks, emails, integers, floats. So these are the granular components. You can also uh, join them together, though. I'm kind of scrolling a little bit quick here. Into uh, structures, structural block types. So the structure blocks or struct blocks consist of multiple sub blocks. And what I was noticing is that our model currently on the community home page, community index page, uh, that's community resource index page. Let me see if I can. Must be at the top here. Yeah, community page. It has these kind of hard coded uh, page structure, and that that was a good first step. Uh, it allows you to have an intro text and a corresponding intro image, and then in the template we're able to render those in a controlled manner. So the content editor can just focus on their job of writing the content. 
so they don't have to take off, um, you know, wear two hats at once, so a designer hat and a content editor hat. They just simply select an image and enter the text. I'll hop over to the editing interface so you can see what that means. So if I edit this page, it's not inline, <clears throat> inline editing, which would be nice, but uh, anyway, in any case, uh, it is a user interface to selecting and editing these blocks. But again, this is uh, assuming just one static structure, and if we ever wanted to, say, reorganize these sections, that wouldn't be too hard, but or um, have something there altogether different, or apply the same kind of styling in another page altogether, um, we would have a little bit more manual work. So today I want to um, introduce a general purpose structure block that has uh, heading, text, and image. And the markup in the template will be this bootstrap card markup. And you can have perhaps a drop down toggle that says, Do you want your image to display left or right, or maybe top, depending on how the complexity of how that works out. If I refer back to this struct, uh, sorry, the um, block documentation, they also have page chooser, which we'll use. Uh, in the case of the view events uh, block, we have a call to action button here, which takes you to another uh, internal page, which is a static um, template pulling in events, which are coming from another model. So this page chooser block will be uh, implemented there, but this choice block can perhaps be used for the um, image alignment. We'll give it an array of choices, left or right for, for starters. And just see how it works. All right, so let's go ahead and dig in. Um, now I'm following loosely a tutorial from a really great resource called Learn Wagtail. That's learnwagtail.io, no, dot com. Mm, yeah, these are really excellent tutorials, starting with basic stuff, uh, but working all the way up to some very advanced stuff, very clear explanations. Uh, can you get reverse chronological listing? Or there's a playlist on, oh, here we go, of course. It's, I mean, I highly recommend these, these lessons. The course is free. The video quality is high. So yeah, if you're wanting to start your own uh, wagtail project, that's a great way to learn the ropes. All right, so essentially, we're gonna come up to the top and we'll need a couple of imports here. Now, I'm not exactly sure how to organize this code. In the Learn Wagtail system, they have uh, tutorials, they have created a, a specific app called Streams. So I guess I'll just follow that. Um, methodology. And we're in a fresh branch, so that's good. Uh, and for the streams, we don't really need, you know, probably any of these. Well, we might need to do some tests at some point. I believe it doesn't even require migrations. this open but in the streams app will create a file called blocks
and in the community page model we'll go ahead and add this stream field now I guess we'll just call it body I think by convention it's called body in there from Wagtail Core Fields import stream field and it's probably I don't mean to import blocks so I'm going to try to avoid an namespace collision here Wagtail Core Import as really, I'll, I'll prefix the Western friends when it's WF block. So I actually I don't need to namespace this. Let's just leave it alone for for the time being. So that should now work correctly. So and we'll just take a look at what this how this looks in the um, UI. Image chooser blocks on fine, okay. Oh uh, yeah, image related things are in the Wagtail images model module. Um, yeah, Mary might just want an arbitrary image there, so let's go ahead and just do that. Wagtail images blocks. Image chooser block. I guess I'll have to define and uh, allow null. How do you do this? Guess it should be documented there. All right, now if we run the server again, and I edit the community page, we will, and I need to add the stream field to the UI here. Let me see, what did the docs say about that? Should just be a field panel. <coughs> Let's see if that works. Yeah, there we go. So now we have the uh, stream field displaying. This is the, Really, um, I think one of the main p selling points of Wagtail and one of the most powerful aspects of it is how flexible this is and natural from a content manager standpoint. Uh, this is my first foray into these stream fields. However, so it's just, hmm, how does it work? Maybe I'm not adding that correctly. Doesn't seem to be actually sh displaying that. So let me refresh that and see if the docs have a little better. Oh, it says right here. Stream field panel. Okay, so it has to be just panel, uh, field panel, stream field panel. 
and I have to import that. Okay, just reading carefully. And most of the difficulties I've had with Wagtail have been issues I've created, but I have encountered some uh, shortcomings in a couple of space, uh, spots in the documentation. Uh, no major, no glaring bugs. There are some long-standing kind of issues that are still under discussion about how Wagtail should handle certain cases like page models that don't have a title field. Uh, but generally, I mean, things just work pretty good. There we go. Now we got heading. Okay. I wonder what kind of heading that'll be. So yeah, we can add. We can call it a stream field because it's just a stream of these blocks, and man, it's just really nice. And you can reorganize them. You can delete them. Okay, very cool. And even the page title could be, sort of like, this heading thing. Um, I'll need to render it in the template. We'll come to the template in a minute. That's one of the things that uh, is not as um, sort of familiar with me with Django Wagtail is having to work from the inside out. You start in the data model and you work your way out to the template. Um, I'm, maybe that's not mandatory, but I'm coming from um, the Meteor JS framework and one of the workflows I appreciated there was starting in a template, mocking it up, as a user would see it and then taking that code and working down, working your way into the inner workings of the software, the data model and things like that to make that happen. So the, for this particular sort of stream field item, these are some of the default ones again that come prepackaged, character block, virtual tech block and image chooser block. So the, Markup on this heading field would essentially be whatever I choose. It could be a heading level two or, or whatever. We're gonna make a block. We're gonna define it over here in our blocks.py. And we'll call it a card block. Now this is um, kind of cribbing code from what I mentioned earlier, this learn wagtail, CMS. Um, what lesson is this? For some reason, the uh, how to use list blocks in wagtail CMS to create repeating stream field content. So yeah, check this check this site out. It's really good stuff. And what they do is they create a class. We'll call it card block because we're going to be creating a a bootstrap card. We need to import the blocks. From Wagtail core fields. Wagtail core, just Wagtail core import blocks. All right. Try to get this stuff memorized. Um, it's a card with title, <clears throat> text, and image. I'll see if the image can, oh, you can do the image alignment later, but uh, it's going to be an important one. And I'm going to deviate from the, where I'm at, it's 5 minutes 55 seconds in the video I mentioned earlier, how to use list blocks in Wagtail CMS to create repeating stream content. Um, I'm going to define this as its own block, it's just a card with these three aspects. And later I might be able to make another type of card block, if not this type, just a simpler one with the title and body uh, that I can place into a row with a 
title description and sort of a page reference. It'll be similar to this, but without the image. My, I mean, I don't know how I'd have to, because this is a call to action button. Once I get the feel for this, I'll, be, I'll start thinking about how to, de how to, you know, decompose and then these pages into smaller blocks and then compose pages of the, of the previously created blocks. And I think the editor will have, you know, this is going to give the editor some natural abstractions to create new pages as well. So. We need two buttons, I think. <laughs> Sorry, I hit the uh, space bar on the video. <laughs> so we need disembodied voice. We'll start with the title. How's this going to work? Character block. We gotta have a title, from what I can tell. Oops. format this a little better. It's not too long, I suppose. I'll close the sidebar so it's easier to see um, the text. Should this be description? No, just text is fine, I guess. And I'm going to put a text block here so that the editor can do rich text. Hopefully not get too carried away with headers. Make it required. I'll need to get this page chooser block in here anyway. Let's go ahead and do that in a second. Image. Image chooser block. Let's see. Let's see. It's not going to be re required. So we want some um, text on the but on the button, which can be configurable. But that's going to be one problem. Is uh, when when to require that there be text available. Let's see, because if there's a page chosen, there could be default text, I guess. Yeah, I can handle it later. I see page link or something like that. I'm not sure what this should be. Page chooser block. All right, then I can say from uh,
what's the structure here again? From streams to blocks, import card block. Let's try it out. Needs an icon, I think. That's got to be parentheses. Where's this error coming from? Let's see here. Stream block. Yeah, where do you find the name and icon? Let me see here. Well, there's the, the, the icon. Huh. Cup. Ah, you can bring in your icon. Your own icon classes. Let's go and add that. I'm not sure if that's going to be an icon there. Oh, now it's working. That was weird. All right, so we're editing the page still. Reload. Card. Yeah, there we go. It's working. It just doesn't have an icon, but essentially you got a card title, card text, card image, button text, and a page browser. Very cool. Uh, let me go ahead and check this style guide. Leave that page. Some icons. They come uh, with Wagtail out of the box. Something that doesn't look too bad. Well, this is okay. Let's do form. It's not quite conveying that this can have an image on it. And this doesn't convey that I can have text in it, so I'm not sure it's a trade-off. But this looks like a form with a button, and that's basically what the card's going to look like. It's going to have a button, some text, and an image, optionally. Alright, so let's go back here. Pages, a few things deep, community, edit, there we go. Looking good. Okay, this is not giving me a rich text editor firstly, so I'm not sure what to do there. Rich text block, okay. I like that uh, this doesn't require migrations. <laughs> Just work. Oh, wait, 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 that wasn't it. This is it right here. Oh. Yeah, there we go. It's pretty sweet. <clears throat> Oops, I'm going to connect the. What's this? The Twitch chat. One moment, let me mute my mic. Okay, I'm trying to make this 
chat a little more interactive so new viewers can actually highlight lines of code. And I've got a chat bot here. Uh, hopefully be adding a few commands too so that people can find out what project I'm working on, uh, what my editor is, when they ask, things like that. Okay, it doesn't seem to be replying. Ah, it's in any case. Dang it. All right, so we've got this in place. Let me just save one of these. Something, something basic. We can reuse one of these. That's cool. And we want it to go to, let's say, the home page. That's all good. Publish that. Now, when I view it live, which is right here, see what happens. Nothing really happens here. And for the For the card block to get into the UI, we have to create a template. And I'm not sure what the default naming convention will be, so let's go ahead and try to make a break by just getting these to display. How do we get them to display in a template? You can probably explicitly tell it a template name. But generally speaking, how do you get, uh, how do you iterate over the card? Uh, sorry, the uh, block, stream field blocks, I'm not sure yet. our model has a body field. The page should have a dang example. Here we go, person block. All right, so we're gonna hop over to our community template, community page, it looks like. Include block page body, because we followed that convention. We'll just call it right here. Octal core tags are there. Now we'll get some breaking, I think. Oh, no, that worked. I'm not sure where it's getting that content from, the heading. It 
It's like the old content. Publish. Refresh. No, it's still getting. So all the blocks in the page body, body. We'll see what happens. This is weird. Oh, there we go. Okay, so I just had to hard refresh it, I suppose. Okay. So yeah, these are working. This this stuff is all working. Now I need to figure out how to template this. And one thing I do remember just now uh, learning from the Learn Wagtail website is to always be explicit with, with your templates. Don't rely on uh, Django's internal template handling. Uh, it just makes it easier for new people to get familiar with your code. Uh, you know, maybe we can follow the default naming conventions. But go ahead and definitely add this where do we add this in oh yeah template right here so just in the class meta yeah good call on that advice and we'll say streams blocks card card block .html, card .html. This one has the call to action button. So I'll use this more um, sort of complicated, so to speak, markup. Okay. So definitely the way to images tags. Just calling it value instead of. So here I just have to map the properties. Value image. And 
thankfully they're consistent with the way to use it. We get rendered value. What was it? Title? Hopefully I'm being consistent here. Simple. It's better than complex. Value. Text. I believe it'll still need to be passed to the rich text. This one's gonna be a little bit tricky to figure out, but essentially it's gonna be value. I could just call this page, but anyway. I'm not going to mess with the href for just a moment. See if this gets rendered into the UI correctly. And it should have a right, uh, or is it a left image? It should be a left image. I don't know. This should pull. Let's find out. Let's see if it works even. Streams blocks cards. All right. Ah, uh, I haven't registered my streams app. That's probably the thing. So <laughs> Wagtail picked it up. So Wagtail's a little bit magic. Settings. Base. But uh, Django doesn't know to look in there for the templates. Maybe? Yeah. All right, we're getting closer. Valid filter for rich text. Yeah, I don't have the. Um, that's no problem. Wagtail. So yeah, I just need this one instead of this. Okay, now what happened here? Dude, it just works. That's pretty awesome. So let me edit this real quick. Clean up this stream field content. Oh, delete that. Oh man, this is gonna be cool. I'll be able to swap these out. <clears throat> it's a little bit of reusable code. I'm trying to think. So off the top of my head, where am I getting these links from? Page URL, I think. I believe it was be page URL. Come on. Okay, so what's the deal here? What does this page link represent?
Looking for the page chooser. Huh, it's not an example there. I'm gonna skim the video. See how they handle it in the template. Card button page dot URL. Okay, and actually it's just a property. You don't need to use the wagtail special the tags. So where are we at again? Community page. Uh, no, no, no. Card here. So the URL, uh, but it's up here. Just a double curly brace. And I'll, I'm thinking this will just be nice. Should I just say page.url? <coughs> Excuse me. commit this is the first step I'll try let me see what the uh, streams at we're under an hour so far so let's go ahead and try out the image alignment I think it's just gonna be a conditional check uh, I'll try left or right line I'm not working on the top alignment yet So those get included in the migration. All right, we're on good ground. Got these committed. I can close out a couple items. So what we need to do is move this before or after, essentially. Add another field. For example, if it's after. When I refresh this image, I believe we'll hop to the right. Yeah, pretty clean, really simple. Uh, implementation. So I'll just have a conditional in a field. Uh, so image align. 
equals blocks choice field choice block choose your block or choice block choice block See if you don't have an image, then image alignment doesn't really matter. I'm wondering if you can have stream fields within stream fields, in which case, you know, there'd be a little button there that said add image. That would be super meta, pretty awesome. All right, getting a little bit fatigued here. Where are we going? <laughs> Sorry. The cho chooser. This will be cool when I get up to a higher level of abstraction. So once we get these card blocks in place, we can have a list block. I just answered my own question. We have a stream block in there. Wow. But I would only want one, one instance of an image. It's more like a struct block, I think, but I don't know. Max number, yeah, there you go. Damn. And then that would be the same for the button, if you want to add a button. Okay, let me get this image alignment down. I'm going to try this stream block next. This is really freaking powerful. Where is the choice block? Was it choice? Document chooser. Page chooser. Choice block. Choices. It's got to be a list.
Hmm. This is kind of strange. some tuples. Got it. Probably didn't read that very closely. Uh, I didn't read the documentation. But they're tuples. And so I need a tuple. I just realized for the image struct to work, I'll have to put conditional, I believe I'll have to put some sort of conditional logic in here. Uh, let me just go ahead and finish this part. So I can't have white space in here, unfortunately. So value dot Right, the value that's stored in the collection is lowercase. Just getting a little bit tired. I might actually have to defer doing the sort of the substructure to another night. Hmm. And the property is image line. There we go. Good. Makes sense, just gotta get things right. Looking good though. 
Let's edit it. Edge line left. Just works. Looking good. So what I can do is now clean up this uh, ooh, stretchy. Right, because it doesn't have the, this one down here doesn't have the call to action button. Yeah, maybe it's okay. But what did I do with the image here? So that it didn't get skewed. I think I used a different tag. Let me take a look. Community templates, community page. That was a fill. What am I using here? Fill. Classes. I mean, I copied and pasted this, so actually, yeah, it's the same thing. I'm trying to think if this is the correct proportions or this, maybe it's getting smushed. Maybe this is the correct proportions. <laughs> it's mind boggling a little bit. Do these people's faces look shorter? Does this look more pixelated and narrow? Let's see if it becomes a bigger issue later. So I'll get these committed. So this part's a little bit destructive, but I will move both of these out of the out of the model now because they can be replaced by this more dynamic stream field. And so I'll have to go back to the community page actually. Leave that open. I think this is going to be ultimately simpler, but a little more opaque. Whew. Yes, yeah. 
So this is just Kind of throw because I didn't clean up those references. So we got some empty template and stuff to clean up. Intro. Very cool. You know, and I might even be able to replace this most of this with the stream field, including the header and all this. I could con we could construct this page, I believe, completely with stream field, uh, but not right now. So we're a little bit over an hour. I could scan the docs real quick just to see if I if it's immediately obvious or fairly obvious. How to set the template basically. Maybe for a struct block. Or a stream block. really be just like making a button block for example setting the button template then in my struct block hmm models blocks so if I just do these as a struct block
This could go either way. I'm on the cusp of falling asleep here. <laughs> Okay, that's not going to quite work. This would be if I wanted to add multiple buttons. Oh, okay, there we go. That's what I'm looking for, actually. So this is all on stream. Stream block. So they'll have a button image decorations. I don't know if decorations is the right word here, but um, it's essentially images and buttons, accoutrements. Uh, Heck, I don't know, just go stream. Mm, what else would this be called? Adornments? No, it's, just, it's actually the utilitarian. Well, this is a, an aesthetic one, but this is it has a functional purpose. Extra? Let's just call it extra. <laughs> yeah, that's not too bad, actually. A stream block. It's got the parentheses right. And then it takes an array. One button. Dude, is this gonna work? I'm gonna be good. A 
I believe I'll still need it. This template here. But that's right here. card I can get the It's not gonna work as I was expecting anyway because I'm not sure how to get these into the template. The right place, right? So it's not just a matter of them optionally showing. Plus that let me add more than one button. Damn. Really close. I'll have to, I'll have to assess this. Oh, so close. A struct block might do it. Because the thing is, the button's got to go to a specific place in the template. Images in a you know variable place in the template. For simplicity, though, I could just have a button field that lets you add one button. In that case, it's really a struct block. Truck box seems pretty uh, pretty powerful. Also, pretty configurable.
I believe this collapsible and collapsed will affect these this level of blocks and not down here. Hmm. Darn. I'm just trying to say, you know, if we don't need a button, we shouldn't be displaying it. I think this struct is one way of hacking that if I set the maximum value. So not this struct but the stream blocks. It's max num. This is going to work. Nope. Stream lock. Let's see if this works just for code reuse. Not too bad. All right, we'll go with it. Let me get it displayed in the UI now. Template helper to bring the block in. I think it was just block button. I can't remember now. Let's see here. Scrolling pretty quick. Try to find HTML snippets. Let's spin at the bottom. Include block button. I hope this works. I believe that's the field name. Okay, it didn't work. Let me just see if there's something.
sort of. And now this is getting really skewed. <laughs> Damn. So yeah, it is including it, but uh, what's what the hell's going on here? Oh, you know what? I think it's just my cancel. I do have extra color braces there. Save that again. Through this. Uh, and what we want to say is either. If it's an indentist thing. I want to display the button text or the page title, one of the two. Defaulting to button text. Very cool. All right, now we're good to go. This is it. I'll stop at this, uh, and I'm able to refactor that other part. It's, it makes a little bit more sense. It, uh, that way, the image is reusable, the button is reusable, and the UI for editing. Well, at least it groups the things logically. And yeah, you can only have one button, and it should be now optional. Yes. Page link should be optional. That's how I was kind of open to put in a stream field where <laughs> you add the button when you want it. what's going on there the buttons being listed as mandatory no it's still doing it
typo. Okay, damn. That's subtle. Easy to mistake. Later, I think the stream field will be the solution. But for now, for the stream block, for now, this is just going to be where I'm going to stop today. Get a couple more commits, cleaning these up. for the button real quick. Unnecessary markup. A few more commits. Have been made. Okay, good stuff. Now, basically, what we can do, refresh this a little bit. It's not too skewed. The Delete those now. This community. Oops. This one edited. Yeah, there was an edit button back there. Always moving forward, clearing choice, deleting that. What happens? Publish. Yeah, it just goes away. Mark up there. There does appear to be a little bit of markup because the 
There's still something saved in the button. I can live with that for now, but yeah, it's not elegant. Dang it. Essentially, when I clear out these, these struct fields, there's still something there. There's still a struct field or a, a button block there. Yeah, if I just dig in there, if button block dot page link, page link. Let me see if that'll actually be a little cleaner way. It's a little bit hard coded though. Now, now my parent, well, it's got to know about the. Yeah, now my parents got to know about the structure of the child. Is that okay? Maybe that's okay. Not too tightly coupled. Let's see what happens when I refresh the page. Does that markup go away? If I wand over there. Oh, I didn't want to go into mobile mode. Where's my little magic wand? Yeah, it did get rid of it. Yeah, so if we don't select a page, really there's no reason to display any button markup. And it's not really hiding, it was like... It's only showing it when a page is selected. All right, that was not too hard to clear up. So let's hop back over here. Reproduce this second page. So we'll leave these links alone for now, but we're going to get this upcoming events block. Put that back in place. That's our new card, upcoming events. A little bit of text. Choose an image, this one, yeah. And we're aligning this one left, I think, to balance it. This is left, this will be right. Well, it doesn't really matter. Let's just balance them right, whoops, right, left. View events. Under the home page is an events page. Publish that. Yeah, it'll nice be nice to get those ones out of the, the static structuring into more dynamic stream field, but looking good. Spacing is decent. It's consistent with these. A little tight, but I'll live with that. And event, yeah, the button works. Okay, really cool, man. Okay, got a little bit away from the hard coding, everything to be a more flexible page designer. And these same blocks, these same components can be used on other pages as well. Like the home page could be, we could have a stream field here and show arbitrary content like, um, you know, image slideshows, things like that, static image, uh, call to action. All right, well, that's, well, went a little long, actually. I thought I'd try to cut it off about an hour and a half, but it's been another sort of edition of this continuing live streaming series on creating a website from scratch with Python, Django, and Wagtail CMS. Uh, this project we want to have done by July. We're a little bit behind uh, schedule, so to speak. We have a lot of features that we're needing to catch up on. We're just focusing on the community page right now. Still have some decent work here, but... Um, we're going to need to enhance out a multimedia library, including faceted browsing, faceted searching, um, displaying multi multiple types of content, video, audio, uh, PDF, and sort of rendering some of it in context. So let's see, like a PDF print document might do one if I search there. See if that works. Yeah, so that it renders it in line. A little PDF viewer. Uh, magazine, we still need some tweaks. We're going to have to build a subscriber model. 
actually get subscriptions and donations. We have a bookstore where we'll want some e-commerce, uh, including a shopping cart, transactions, and maybe calculating shipping, stuff like that. It's non-trivial. Contact form, I think Wagtail handles that out of the box. So yeah, if you're interested in this kind of stuff, building a you know, feature-rich website, this is the project. It's for a live website for a nonprofit organization, Western Friend. Okay, well, I think uh, I appreciate everybody who uh, has checked out this, the live stream. And if you're uh, watching this on YouTube, feel free to leave me a question or comment in the comments section. I'll try to respond to that promptly. All right, well, thank you very much for watching and have a great day.